Hello everybody. How's your life in lockdown going? I tell you, I'm so busy. I just haven't had a second to sit down and write some music. It's ridiculous. I've got to spend some quality time watching the grass grow. There, dead. You saw that, didn't you? Did it? Then there's all these leaves to polish. I mean, they're not going to polish themselves, are they? Oh, blimey. I have to give the dogs their um, elementary uh, Thai for Beginners lesson. Um, look, I can tell you haven't done your homework, and it's not that I'm angry, I'm just very, very disappointed. I have to count every bubble in a glass of fizzy water. 4,986, 4,987, 4, 1, 2, 3. Now, come on, make an effort, make an effort. Sawa ti di, sawa ti di, sabai di mai. And then after all that, if I'm really lucky, I get half an hour to write something like this. OK, everybody, so given <sighs> I'm so short of time, got so much to do, so little time to do it, sort of. Um, I thought what we do today is one thing which does crop up quite a lot. People have asked quite a lot a bit about how you get your chords and your melody to sort of meld together as though they're meant to be, uh, you know, a lifelong partnership. And this is... It's a huge question, and therefore um, I'm just going to sort of scratch the surface. But I should say that almost anybody who sits down and says, I will now give you the 10 uh, most important rules about writing tunes and putting them together with chords is destined to fail, because every rule you come up with, there's going to be 150 exceptions. So let's look at these more like guidelines, <laughs> OK? Um, what I would say is that um, what what they're really useful for is fixing things when they've gone wrong um, and you should sort of just keep them in the back of your mind when you're um, trying to write but if things don't sound right then it's time to have a little look and see if these guidelines might help you at all so look what I'm going to do this is piano tech people always ask what samples you need so piano tech is one of the pianos you use emotional piano from sound down is the other um, those are the two main ones so while we are uh, look Whoop, that doesn't sound like it at all. Where's it gone? That's not it either. There it is. OK, right. As a rule of thumb, if you have a chord, here's a chord of C major, obviously, well, not obviously, maybe, um, you are free to use any of the notes from the chord. Very simple, but it is very, very restrictive. So chord of C, chord of F. You can't go through life just using the notes for the chord or every tune would sound, well, frankly, like that. Like you've just sort of dropped into kind of um, some kind of preschool hell. Um, so moving on, um, you can have the joining up notes as well, as long as you don't have Ling, as long as you don't feature them. So, for example, if we've got a chord of C major, you've got C, E, and G, you can have the D and the F. So you can go... OK. So, chord of C. Using those passing notes in there. On to an F. Going on A, G, F. B, A, G. So you can have all those. Those are all fine. Um, the ones you, ones to really avoid, and I use the word avoid very, very cautiously because, you again, every time I say, you can't have that, someone will go, uh, could I just quote the example of uh, uh, Deep Purple's... Uh, uh, in OK, I, I get it. OK. But if you're sitting there going... Why does my tune not sound any good? The answer is, um, look carefully, first of all, at things which are a semitone or a half step away from a chord note. So if you've got a chord of C, C sharp, <laughs> D sharp or E flat. Now there's an example. Okay, so look, oh, oh, that sounds terrible. It sounds terrible like that when you play that F sharp um, against uh, a chord of C. But if you put it to, as a sort of a bichord where you're putting C, a chord of D major on top of a chord of C. 
suddenly it sounds lovely. So for every rule, there's about 450 exceptions. But semitone clashes mm, can be a bit dodgy. Now, if this is the kind of thing you find useful, then obviously please remember to subscribe to the channel and click the little notification things, and then you'll be forewarned when we do live things and when we do more videos and stuff like that. And if you have a question, post it in the comments underneath. So we've got, we're in our chord of C. What about that one? What about that A? Uh, I tend to feel it, the sixth tends to pull you onto a new uh, chord. So. Those in the UK will recognise that. This is, we've got a famous, uh, those of you not in the UK, there's a famous soap opera called um, EastEnders. Uh, and the tune goes. Okay, now where would you, it, it then goes. It's a good tune. It's been around for about 50, 8 million years. So how are we going to harmonise this? That's fine, because we've got joined up notes. Right, A and F clearly is pulling you to a new chord. So we're going to go to chord four in the key of C, which is F major. Now, I could now I could stay on F and I could go and then go back to C. But what's probably better is is to move on to chord two, which is D minor. Now what? That sounds horrible. Going just straight. What I think he does, if I remember, is to do that, which is to go to the first inversion of C. So you're, you're putting the E in the bass. Then you can go to... Here is a really example, a good example of something else. The chord goes to F, but the, the tune is really revolving around these Gs. So what it's making is an F ninth. There's the there's the ninth. You could, I can feel the comments flying in. People say, no, it's not really. A, it's, I know, I know. There's any way you try and describe a chord. There's six hundred million alternatives, and these. <laughs> but the the point though to come out of this is. Your melody note adds sometimes um, extended harmonies to your um, your bass triad. So you can have an F there, and, and if your melody note's there, then that is effectively an F F nine, and then it resolves onto chord five, and then you're back to the beginning. Tune which launched a thousand careers or whatever. Anyway, um, so those are just those are the sort of rules of thumb, guidelines. Call them what you will. If your tune is sounding a bit, then take a deep breath, go and have a cup of tea. Always helps. Come back and then think. Hmm, semitone clashes probably not the best thing in the world. Maybe I can work. But also, it's a matter of not being kind of. Real kind of meat and two veg, real black and white, but oh, everything's got to be one, four, five. Whoa, that's good. Now, there's always a more interesting way. Sometimes it can be a little bit unnecessary. Okay, look. I said we're going to write a piece of music, and that isn't a piece of music. That is just faffing about. So let us um, let us leap in. I've got some Spitfire Labs loaded up. Spitfire Labs are fantastic. They're free. Um, they are um, a great contribution to the world of uh, of you know sampling and and all that kind of malarkey. Because there's some really 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 good sounds in there. Um, what have I got? Like, I've got some drums, some hats. Uh, there's a little sort of bass sound. So the drum's good. Oh, yeah. Woo! 
Sounds like I've got a bit of reverb on now. <gasps> Have I mentioned? Ah, obviously I didn't. I do a course called How to Write Music. How to Write Music is my online course that takes you through every step of the process. How to get going, chord progressions, tune writing, developing and arranging your music. Six hours of exclusive video tutorials, a course text packed with tips and a supportive online community. Get more out of your music and sign up today. Moving along, we've got a little dulcimer. I use this one all the time, I really like it. Strings, which one is it? I don't know which strings that is. They got, they, is this a strings two? Strings long. It has a nice funky little interface. It's a very different interface actually. It doesn't look like anything else. But you know, there's good stuff in here. You can do all kinds of um, good, good things. So, An ostinato can also pick out a can pick out harmonies as well. Look, because it's it's effectively picking out um, a chord progression. Um, I like that. Let us say we stick with that. So there is a basic chord progression in there. Um, if I quantize this to 16th, is it all going to go horribly wrong? Yep. <laughs> oh, 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 that's not very much fun. Um, so what I'm using here is where things have gone wrong, uh, I'm just nudging. I'm nudging by, not bar, quantize, there we go, undo. Right, so I want to go that one, nudge forward. Um, whatever sequence or door or whatever you're using. Oh yeah, look how badly wrong this has all gone. When you get out of shape, would it not be quicker to play it in again, Guy? Yes, it would actually. But now I've committed. Now I'm committed. Oh, t lords of mercy. What? Okay, and then we'll loop that. Not very clean. I could spend another hour on that. No, we couldn't spend an hour doing that. What are you talking about, guys? Spend another five minutes. But it would be a tedious five minutes, and you deserve more than tedium. Right, let's pick out this bass line. What have I got going? So, um, in terms of the tune, I've got... E.G. So that seems to pick out a, um, a C chord. Then I go up to the A minor. Then down to an F major. So all that, so I'm going to go... Let's go back to the bass. So let the C do its thing. Now, in comes A. Down to F. And finally down to C. Nice and simple. And again. And then I'll repeat that again. Okay, that'll do. Um, I could do it. Right, now I'm going to play a hi-hat slightly on the off. So it's got a little offbeat thing going for it. OK. 
Okay. Now a lot of the time when you play stuff in, the first time round it's a bit rubbish. And then it kicks. By the time you've played one loop, uh, you've sort of got your eye in, and it. Oh yeah, okay, that works. So we can. I'm going to put these. Up. We're going to have some hats starting earlier. I quite like that. Oh, it's a bit loud. You can see where it's gone to there, can't you? I like the kind of... It's that is not half bad. I mean, I'm talking about the kit. That drums lab kit is really not half bad. Now, I want this, it's kind of like a, some old geezer playing it. <laughs> it is an old geezer playing it. <laughs> oh, you're all obsessed with my age, by the way. Just chill. Okay, so that is a perfectly nice little vibe going on there. Uh, so now we're going to do the tune the other way around. We're going to do... Tune to so I've got a uh, okay so we got A minor F and C. It's a four chord loop. It's only three chords, but you hold the bottom one for two circuits. So it goes one two three four one two three four two three four one. So everything falls into four four bar loops, even if there's only three chords. I rather like I think this is all right. Simple time-saving trick. Do not... Wh what is the point of sitting there for four bars when you only need to sit there for one? If you do this over and over and over and over and over again, uh, you will come to regret that. That's all right. Okay. But you've got to count. Okay. I'm liking this. I don't feel any need to change it. I mean, in... Went a bit pants at the end, but no, yeah, no, it's it's kind of. What's the point of a soft piano if you play it like that guy? I mean, look, all those red bars are ridiculous amounts of velocity, because there's no way. I don't know. Look, okay, don't get excited. Just live with it. I'm fixing this end one with. How about a little stringy occasion in here as well? Ooh. It needs to do something slightly different to what the piano is doing. Um. I'm sort of thinking of playing the right hand and left hand separately. Subtle. Again, A minor, F, and C major. Now we're going to bring the left hand in.
now some um, some suspensions. Okay, I like that. I'm now going to add a left hand. Um, so string left, <laughs> um, and I'm not going to play any more. I'm not, you probably couldn't see it actually, um, but I was using quite a lot of mod wheel, this little friend down here, to adjust the volume as I was going through. I don't want two lots of controllers trying to control the same instrument at the same time, otherwise it goes <laughs> and it's horrid. There we go. That's, that's as close to a coherent explanation you're going to get this afternoon, this morning, this evening, tonight. Delete as applicable. Now it's going to ramp up a bit. Lots of consecutive fits in there. I know, I know, I love them. Okay, it's done. What? It's suddenly done? Guy decides he's finished something? Don't be ridiculous. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, it's a bit of tidying up to do, but not much. Uh, there is quite a lot to do with the the mix, because the mix is all is not is nothing. Um, look, I'm not gonna. Maybe I'll. I tell you what, I'm, I won't mix it properly. I'll just add a bit of reverb, but then maybe because a number of oh, it didn't insert. Ah, retrospect. Okay, look, I forgot to record that one. With any luck. If you go to retrospective recording, if you are a Cubase user and you press insert linear recording, yes, get out of jail free. That's how it works. Okay, save your work, save your work, save your work. Okay, now, um, all I'm going to do is add some reverb in, I think, to one or two of these tracks. Here we go. Um, and I've already set up some, now I've got two different types of reverb. We got and and I'll actually maybe I'll do a video on mixing because that probably be simpler. Oh my goodness, too much. No, it's not actually very good. We don't need it. We need it on the strings on the piano. Take those strings down a bit. And the drums. Bass up a bit. Where's the bass gone? Oh, it only circles twice. Oh. <laughs> Where's my bass gone? Circles? What, what kind of musician says it loops, doesn't it? Okay, that's better. Not sure about that E, never mind. That's it, it's done. There you go. With surprising boldness and a change of personality, because I normally will go, ah, oh, but I could just fix it. I could just. No, 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 no. This is the new economical calm me. It is finished. Enjoy it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so <coughs> I think that's all I've got on this. So <coughs> that is the gist of it. Um, and in a sort of roundabout way, I hope I've sort of given you one or two uh, things to think about when it comes to um, <sighs> chords and tunes and how you get the two to sort of meld together in a perfect, oh, doing the hand washy thing, uh, perfect, perfect harmony. At, um, but as I say, 
don't don't sit here and try and write tunes and do chord progressions by rules because that will just kill the human spirit. Let it go, and if it doesn't work, then try and use rules to fix it. Or if something's wrong, use rules to fix it. You need to sort of ingest these things so that they become part of your just way of improvising. So it's not a conscious thing. And then you get the spontaneity without the kind of algebra that goes with some traditional four-part harmony, which kind of... Anyway. anyway, that's it for now. Hope you've enjoyed it. Stay safe, and I'll see you very soon. If you've enjoyed this, I should remind you, you should be subscribing, obviously. Anyway, see you very soon.